This is Henry Frederick of Headline Surfer. We're here with our third and final debate of the night in Port Orange at the Lakeside Community Center. And this is the primetime debate for Volusia County Chair. Um, the uh, candidates, I'd like to introduce their names, and I'll ask each of them to give a two minute opening statement or less if they prefer. Uh, first of all, in their alphabetical order, is the incumbent, Jason Davis, who was elected in 2012. Uh, next to him, who isn't here, is Greg Gimbert. Uh, next to him, or should be next to him, is Ed Kelly. Uh, he's the mayor of Ormond Beach. And next to Mr. Kelly is Tom Lepatka, and Mr. Lepatka is the mayor of Orange City. Uh, with that said, Mr. Davis, would you please give a two-minute opening statement? I would. Oh, I, I guess we're yelling today. Uh, pardon the voice again. I kind of hoarse from last night. You know, tonight, you know, everybody knows who I am. I'm Jason Davis. I'm the county chair. You know, I was a military veteran. You know, I've done all that. Thing. But tonight is really a night where everybody's going to learn true differences. What's the difference between Mr. Kelly and Mr. Mr. Uh, Lepukta? And even the one that's not here, Mr. Gimbert. And you know, we have to ask ourselves, why is he not here tonight? I mean, this is a very interesting question. Why are you not here? You know, are you afraid to answer the question? Are you afraid that the questions are too hard? I know all four of us got this. At least you're looking right now at three candidates who are willing to stand here to answer the questions of this man right here. And to answer the questions and put our face on video and on the record for all the citizens of Volusia County to pick, to pick their county chair favorite. So I don't need to take the rest of my two minutes, so with that, I am Jason Davis, and I would appreciate your support. Mr. Ed Kelly. I'm Ed Kelly. I am currently the mayor of the city of Ormond Beach. I started my political career in 1993 when I was elected to the Ormond Beach City Commission. I served for two terms. I was unelected in 1997. I stayed out of politics, uh, spending time on my business and my, with my family until I was asked to run again in 2004. It was a partial opening or a partial term opening and I was asked to run because all the changes that we had made, bringing government changes, bringing efficiencies, creating uh, a new procedure, zero-based budgeting for one, saving the city of Roman Beach millions of dollars of the programs that we put into effect. By the time I was, during the time that I was out, our expenses had ballooned, number of employees had blossomed and bloomed, and I was asked to run again. So in 2005, I was elected to fill a partial term. I was re-elected at the end of 2005. I was elected in 2007, re-elected. I mean, then I was elected mayor in 2010. I was re-elected in 2012, unopposed, and then re-elected in 2014, unopposed. Our city of Ormond Beach has done great things, not all because of me, but because of working together. Working together, we accomplished a lot. I've heard others say, you may have disagreements. We do, but one of the first things I learned was you can disagree without being disagreeable. And oftentimes when there are disagreements, it's because something isn't made clear. And what I plan to do as chair is to bring consensus, it may not be unanimous, rarely do you get unanimous on contentious issues, but you can at least discuss. And oftentimes in those open discussions, as the chair, you can bring people to a decision that may be one that you weren't even, no one even thought about. So I plan to bring my leadership. I've been my own business man. Thank you. Uh, I'm I'm totally totally fine. Fine. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Um, Mr. Tom Lepatka, oh, your, yes. your opening statement, please. Yes, good evening. My name is Tom Lepatka. I'm a uh, Volusia County resident for 35 years. Uh, I have been civically active for the last 15 years. Uh, and elected for the last nine years, including my fifth year as mayor of Orange City. Uh, Orange City is in the southwest corner of Volusia County. Uh, we're a prosperous little town. We find ourselves in the crossroad of a whole lot of growth. Uh, some of it earned, much of it, some of it not. Uh, planned growth is very important. Uh, we've learned that hard way in some instances. Uh, but we have done extremely well as far as uh, we're a conservative town. We do not carry a debt service. Uh, that's very important to real realize that we've been able to grow our town without a debt service. Um, the, the projects that we currently have uh, on, the, uh, on the slate are mainly water projects. We've, we've focused on uh, uh, 
the continuation of the, of the Blue Spring, uh, which we are in the Blue Spring basis, uh, the basin, and uh, the money that we've been able to garnish through the various uh, state grants and federal grants enable us to, uh, to do much as, as far as the ecology is concerned, in, uh, which I think is a very premier issue in Volusia County in helping to mitigate and fix the water problems. And that's primarily pollution of our springs and uh, the estuaries and some of our banks. So with that said, uh, I am a, a prime candidate to run for county chair. Uh, I believe that the Volusia County is uh, got all of the elements to be probably one of the best counties, working counties in the state of Florida, if not the country. So with that said, I'll uh, end it. Mr. Some two other gentlemen in your openings. I want to clarify something. Mr. Davis uh, opened with, where's Mr. Gimbert? Mr. Gimbert uh, posted a notation on Facebook that he wasn't going to a fake debate uh, moderated by a roach and someone he described as garbage. And so I take those with great compliment. Uh, with that said, I'm going to introduce uh, the first question to Mr. Lopatka. Uh, Tom, coming from the municipal level, how much of a learning curve, and I guess you've been in city government, what? Uh, you were two terms as mayor and- Nine years. Okay. Um, do you feel you have enough of a learning curve, especially being in West Volusia with all the changes, to come into the dais and the land and, and not misbehaving. No, not at all. I mean, it's, it's very. We're, we're running the same types of government. Yeah, these, these are these are city city manager in this case a county manager uh, with a with a, um, uh, a con council form of government. Uh, they are to make policy. Uh, they should be making policy. Uh, but no, it, it is um, very very similar. Uh, in aviation, we find that uh, airplanes, whether they're small or they're large, they all fa fall under the same principles of flight. But so no, I, I don't find there's a learning curve at all other than some of the issues perhaps. Uh, I guess falling is better than crashing. Um, Mr. Kelly, you're from a larger municipality. I believe Woman Beach is what, fourth or fifth largest in the county. Um, and you have a lot of experience as well. How much how many years have you used the government with council and the mayor? Fifteen. Fifteen, 15 years. years. Uh, do you see any what, bit of a curve in terms of transition if you're elected by the voters either in August or November? I think the only adjustment will be working with people that you haven't worked with. And when I'm elected, there'll be three new people on the county council. You're talking about the elected officials? Yes, the elected okay. officials. There'll be three new people right. if I'm elected. So you'll have a different makeup of the council. And the first thing you need to do is to work and develop policies and procedures and where you want to go as a group, because those three may be different than the three that, that, are, not, that are not longer there. So I don't see any learning curve at all. I've had my own business, even when I was with Hawaiian Tropic, uh, setting up a European subsidiary. Uh, I set up, I'm CEO of a European company. It was basically my own company. I had to answer the rhymes. It was my own. Wow, we only get a minute now? Those other guys talk forever. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> anyway, there will be, there will be no, no learning curve whatsoever. A businessman makes decisions based upon the facts, and the best decisions are made by getting all the facts and going forward. So in, in summary, Mr. Popkin and Mr. Um, Kelly, you see yourselves running, uh, up and running right from the start, pretty much. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jason Davis, you were a newcomer. I believe your previous uh, run was a congressional seat where you were pretty well not known. Uh, you ran against two heavyweights in 2012, and Mr. Ted Doran and uh, Paul Persis. Uh, you had, what, 12,000, 10,000 for campaign? About seven, eight. And uh, I believe in the, in the general election versus you uh, bested him by uh, 22,000 vote plurality? Uh, 68 percent. Okay. With that said, uh, you, you were criticized very heavily by the news journal, especially at the beginning, uh, just not keyed in. Uh, Mr. Noftel, who was in our second debate, Ted Noftel, uh, he was part of a group of Republicans who went to the dais, and you were especially criticized for voting with Deneen and the Democrats that were on the council. And of course, what would you say, did you have a learning curve from that experience? Well, you know, no matter, no matter what you do when you go into a new job, uh, I was an occupation officer in the Army, and when I go from post to post, you have a learning curve. There's always a learning curve. Uh, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, the county manager and I were talking a couple of weeks ago, 
And he says, you know, the difference between running a city government and a county government is like driving a tricycle and then jumping to a semi-truck. There's a lot more to do. There's a lot more money involved, higher, you know, higher budgets. You know, we have more departments, we have more people. We have over 5,000 people in our, under our employ. You gotta know where to go, you gotta know who to talk to. You've gotta travel 40,000 miles a year to get around this county. You've got to do these things. These are the things you gotta do. Yeah, there's a little bit of a learning curve. But you know what, within a couple of months, I was there, on board, taking off and rocking and roll. And uh, everything was going great. Thank you very much. Uh, Tom Lepotka, first, uh, next question's gonna go to you. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about the, the beach. Uh, the world's most famous beach, uh, which some people say is Daytona, I kind of think of it as the East Coast, it's the county beaches. Um, there's been talk about making it better for the public by taking off the tolls. Uh, where do you stand on that issue, the tolls? Well, I think the tolls are, if they're, if they're doing what they were intended to do, they're, they're appropriate. In other words, if they're, if they're paying for the grooming of the beach, for those that are using the beach, we also have a lot of people outside of Volusia County coming to these beaches. So if, if in fact, if those tolls are actually doing that, and paying for the grooming, paying for the upkeep, paying for the, for the public safety there, then, then it's appropriate. But if, if it's not being evaluated that way, then it probably isn't. I don't know that answer. But I would certainly be asking that question. It's a good question. Uh, Mr. Kelly, uh, you've uh, made it known that you would like to see the tolls come off. Can you say why and if you think it's feasible? Yeah, I think because at one point when I looked at it real, real deeply, half of the money was going to the company that was collecting the tolls. So where was that other half? And prior to the tolls, who was paying for that? It was in the general fund. It came out of the general fund. I would like to see it another way. I'd like all the routes open. And if anybody's listening out there, you're going to repost this on Facebook, hear it. I want all the beach ramps open so you can access the beach and drive on it. If you can't, if you're not going to access it, somebody even criticized and said, you want to open it so that bicycles and people can walk down. No, you don't need a bicycle ramp open. The ramps need to be open. You can create kiosks. And every local person should have the ability to have free pass. The people that should pay should be the people that come, that use the beach, that don't do anything, but drive over here and want to use the beach as their, their place. They, they mess it up. But let the tourists that come here let them pay, open it up, and keep, put kiosk okay. in there. Uh, Jason Davis, uh, what's your, what's your uh, point of view on uh, who we heard from Mr. Babka and Mr. Kelly's clear, you know, going the opposite direction, where do you stand on it? Well, I'd love to open every single, every single ramp there is. I'd love to open them up, unfortunately. You can't do that. Because there are some of these ramps are in an area where you can't drive, or the sand is too soft, you can't, you can't get your car through it. So opening all the ramps is really impractical. I did bring the idea of kiosks in when we were talking about beach access when we were changing the fees uh, two years ago. That you know we could put a kiosk actually in a 7-Eleven where someone can put it in their credit card bank, get it passed, go around the beach, put it on your car. We don't even need those toll booths. Unfortunately, uh, the other council and the county staff, the county manager didn't agree with that, so that's no problem. So we keep our little, our little toll booths, and here's the thing. Without the toll booths, who is not only going to, see, yeah, you're right, 50% of that money goes to the company that collects the tolls. The other 50% goes to pay for the law enforcement out there, our beach patrol, goes to pay for those, those young kids that go out there and jump out there and save your life, clean up the beach, and I mean, we've got a little bit of small. So. Uh, uh, staying with that team for a minute, uh, Jason Davis, uh, the incumbent, um, we discovered through our own reporting that Mr. Gibbard, uh, if we checked all of you out in terms of anything that stood out, that Mr. Gibbard in his 20s uh, was, was given a summons to go to court for misdemeanor uh, crime of entering the beach with a motor vehicle, not by way of ramp. Um, and if any of you had done that now, I can imagine you'd save your face. Um, we bury you on the beach right there. Okay. With that said, um, Mr. Gibbard begged off of it by saying, well, that was in his 20s, and just because he's running for office, that's, that's cockroach is digging it up to make it look bad. Do uh, you agree with that, Mr. Davis? For a guy that's been pushing so his part, that you're a cockroach, or that? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Davis, Mr. Gibbard's uh, responsibility. 
and judge. Well, let me just say this, you know, Mr. Gibbert and I have one thing in common. We were both 20 years old, and we were full of all the energy in the world, and, uh, you know, we probably did some crazy things when we were 20 years old. Well, no, he, he did. Well, wait, he was late 20s, but you were no, late 20s. Were you in golf four? Were you in golf four in your 20s? Yeah, in the late 20s, you know. Uh, instead of driving my four-wheel drive, which I didn't see the report, driving my little four-wheel drive, jeep down and destroying a protective environment and trying to get onto the beach for free or whatever this crazy idea was, I was jumping on airplanes protecting this country in the middle of a foreign nation, trying to save everybody, keep our freedoms going. So, uh, gee, I was in my 20s, I was doing crazy things. Well, gee, I was doing crazy things too, but it was saving, saving this country. And to be clear, you were combat wounded, right? Yes, I was injured in combat. Uh, Ms. Kelly, uh, what does that say about judgment uh, for someone in their 20s to beg off or something like that? And for someone that says he's the savior of the beach? I'm not sure that you should blame things you do in your youth on the poor judgments that you make to try to access a beach going around a poster area. I mean, how do we know there wasn't a turtle nest, for God's sake, that's in there somewhere? Or vegetation, I mean, the sea oaks. I mean, that just shows that you had lack of respect for authority, uh, wanting to play outside of the bounds of government and regulation. It's, it, I don't think it was a good choice. It's not one that, I, one that I would not have done at that time in my 20s. But he's not here to defend himself. Well, he had the, the, <laughs> sir, Ms. Davis, please. Um, he had the opportunity of addressing Mr. LaPaca, your take on this. Well, I've raised five sons. I'm really not going to judge anybody else's behavior. Um, and, and I came from a very large family. I was raised with 18 first cousins. And uh, we, did our, Speak up. We, did our, uh, we did our things as, as grown ups. Well, I'm not going to judge it. The judge the uh, judge the circumstances, uh, especially at the age of talking. Just, I'm uh, curious, Mr. Butler, uh, being in the late 20s, were your sons still living at home with you? I have one that's living home with me, yes. How old is he? He's, he's 29. He'll be 30 this month, and he is a, uh, he is a uh, veteran, army veteran. He's had uh, two combat tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. And he's having a difficult time. Well, you have my respect for your son's uh, dedication to the, to the nation. Um, Mr. Davis, let's talk about uh, the beach. Uh, stay on that theme for a, a, a couple questions here. Um, you've been heavily criticized as basically selling out to the special interests, the, the, you know, the, the prime, the, the big time uh, inside, business insiders, the more insanities, the higher grounds, at least France Kennedy's, the, the people that drive the community with Daytona National Speedway, et cetera, et cetera, ICI homes. Do you think that's a fair thing for Mr. Gimmer to label you with? Well, considering um, more insanities, it's very dated. It's never given me a single dime, right? Everything I did, I did on my own. I earned my own way. Um, as far as voting on the beach, the beach issue, the, way, the reason why we made those ordinances is because to stop the constant conversation every other week, people were coming in saying, get the cars out from, from my place. I want a no driving zone. No parking zone. No driving zone. Every other week. It was at a point after six months when the entire council was, we got to do something. And then when these two hotels came in, we said, here's an opportunity to make some change, to segregate a core section and make it really damn difficult, unless you have like 60 million bucks, you are not taking a single car off that beach because you will have so many requirements. These are the toughest requirements to build a building in Volusia County that have ever been on the books. And we're talking about the two hotels. I'm talking about two hotels. The, uh, the Hard Rock, Rock and the West End. Right. Mr. Kelly, um, you obviously <coughs> have the largest Incoming amounts of campaign monies. Uh, Jason Davis, how much you have to date that you brought in? Uh, I think about 20,000. And Mr. Lapatka, how much have you brought in so far? Probably about seven to 8,000. And Mr. Kelly, how much have you brought in so far? I think with this report, a little over 100,000. 100, but you're still behind Eric Dietrich and some of the sheriff's candidates. And I've been criticized for taking support from people who can afford to give it. Take it, I've, I've, been in, I've been involved in this community. Well, I was going to get, let me ask you a question first. Uh, I just want to set the tone with the, uh, with the money. So we'll give you an answer. Um, we'll give you an answer. Okay. Do you feel that it's unfair, that's a cheap shot, that just because someone has given money because they recognize their experience, especially yours, the municipal level, in a beach city, 
Um, and I've talked to Mr. Hussein about this. He's like, Henry, we're not trying to tell, rule somebody. We're looking for accountability and best in the people that care about our community. Uh, and I know I've talked to you about that. Would you say that that's accurate, or do you think that maybe you owe somebody something in exchange for getting that? There's nobody that can give me give enough money to buy me to do whatever it is they want me to do. I'm going to make my decisions based upon what I want. I have people that have seen me successful in business. They've seen me successful in government. They've seen me make a difference in the city of Orange Beach and to criticize that. And then out of that same mouth or Facebook post, go running in emails begging to the same people for money and not getting it. And, yeah. and then criticizing me over it really kind of ticks me off. But they support me because they've seen the result and the evidence of what I've done and the work that I've done. And I'm not beholden to anyone. Mr. Kelly, and I'll get to you in a second, Mr. Lopatka. You've run in how many elections? All but one, which would be uh, 10. I've won nine. Uh, so you've never lost an election? I lost one in 97. Okay, you've lost one. And you've won one. How and about you, one. Mr. Lopatka, how many elections have you found yourself in? Well, I've, been in uh, I've been in three, I've won two. Would they count me up those? Stop it. We have elections. Mr. Um, Lopatka, you've heard the amounts, you've heard the scenarios and explanations. What's your take on it if you feel it's unfair to be criticizing the candidate because he's got X amount of dollars? Or if he's well, I'm not, I'm not doing the criticizing, so I'm right. not criticizing. <laughs> no, but I mean, in terms of, no, but I'm talking about those who say that these people are bought, they're bought and sold, and they're not really representing the public. You can say a lot of things about a candidate, and I don't necessarily uh, really listen to that. That's, uh, you know, the, we, we, we are spending a lot of time with each other, these candidates. You know, we're, we're we're probably seeing each other a lot more than we've had in the past because of the forums that are going on. And so we're getting to know each other a lot better. And I respect these gentlemen. I, I really do. Uh, it's, uh, it's good to be out. And, and I don't mind sitting at the table with, with these men. They're bright and they're knowledgeable. And, um, and I, I trust them. Why are you here, Mr. Lepaka? <laughs> why am I here? Because yeah. I'm a qualified candidate. You've asked me. Okay, Mr. Kelly, why are you here? Tonight? <laughs> yes, tonight. Cool. There was a debate, and uh, I show up for every debate that I can and to have the opportunity to discuss the issues and share the, my thoughts. Do you, go to faith, do you go to faith debates? I did go to faith debates. No, fake debates. Fake debate. Fake, fake debate. Oh, this is fake debate. Is that what you guys no, I thought it said fake. No, it said fake. Fake. F A K E. Fake. I understand. Like flake without the L. We've been to debates where there were a lot less people this than there are here. We've been where the candidates outnumbered the, the audience. So, but you felt the message was. I go to every debate where I have an opportunity to effectively change someone from who they're going to vote for to me. And I've worked for every single vote because having lost by 34, every vote counts. Uh, Mr. Davis, the same question to you. You know, there's an old saying when we were kids growing up, with Waldo, with Mr. Gimber. Um, why are you here tonight? Well, uh, you know, exactly correct. The same thing that uh, Mr. Collins said. You know, we go to these debates. We, we are out here to get the point across, to let you know what's really going on in government. You, you hear all these things and write-ups and people saying and, uh, you know, the, the wonderful world of Facebook, which is, believe it or not, folks, I know it's hard to believe, but not everything on Facebook is absolutely true. I know it's hard to comprehend, but it's, that is the truth. And so to get out here and get the truth, to know what's really going on in your governments, you know, to hear their opinions and to hear my opinion, you know, to, like Mr. Kelly says, every single vote counts. You come out here and talk to people. I want your vote. They want your vote. It's your choice. Who, is, who do you believe is going to do the better job? Mr. Kelly, uh, moving on now to beyond the beach uh, to other areas, <clears throat> there's been a lot invested in our trails program. Um, I believe there was a, a Jason Davis, you know this better than I would. What was the uh, program with the, put to the voters that had like a 20 year lifespan to clear money? Echo. Is that Echo or Pollution Forever? Uh, both, actually. Echo is uh, the Ecological Culture, where 0 0.2 mills is going to a fund to fund okay, got it, got it. stuff. And, I, and it's my understanding that as soon as that was passed, the county council back then uh, voted to uh, bond out for the money all at once. No. Uh, for the life of it. 
No, a hundred million dollars. No, that is incorrect. That is the Florida, the Volusia Forever Farm, okay, but which was you, bonded. You get what I'm getting at, right? That they, 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 they we bonded the Volusia Forever not for a hundred million dollars, right? Million dollars, yes. To go to trails. Not all to go to trails. But, but how much was to go to trails? Uh, a lot of it has gone to trails. We spent over a hundred million dollars on the trail system, but we use that money to also buy property. I.e. Beck Ranch, the Leffler property, sensitive areas, that's what that right. was used for. With that said, um, Mr. Lopatka, it's my understanding from talking to different county officials that there needs to be a significant more significantly larger investment that the, we are no longer, we are no further along in completing these trails compared to the Seminoles and Orange Counties and those those places. Um, well, would you may... abandon it? Let me just finish, please. I'm sorry. I apologize for sorry. interrupting you. Um, would you stay the course with it, or would you say we have other priorities that are more pressing, like the roads, the bridges, and that, and uh, sh uh, de the salaries of the deputies, for example, who are severely underpaid? No, I, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't stop the trail progress at all. I think it's a, it's an enhancement to to the community as a whole. Um, you know, on the west part of the county, the, the trails are almost complete. Actually, you know, the spring to spring trails are are just about there. Um, we've got one that runs right through Orange City, and then we, we do our planning, our strategic planning with our parks in the city that connect with those trails. Uh -huh. So you can work, work the trails and make it into the city at the same time. Um, Mr. Kelly, the same question. Should we stay in the state of course, like Ms. Piper says, with the trails, or do we have other more pressing issues like uh, deputy salaries coming up to where Flagler, Seminole, and others are, um, roads that are deteriorating badly and bridges even that need some repair. I think it's a balance and I think the problem is or the issue is you have money from different funds dedicated to particular things and those funds are dedicated to certain issues and the money dedicated that people voted on to do that for the trails should be there. Ormond Beach we just completed or in the final stages completing our trail program and the state has a policy where they're creating a trail to, from the entire state of Florida for which there are grants, and if you have funding to match that, then you can, can get complete your trails uh, at a much lower cost to people. And people are using the trails. My daughter lived in um, Lake Mary. There's a trail that went behind her house and people wanted to live as close as they could to access that point. And uh, so there are people who are using it. Maybe they'll get outside and stay off their computers and quit playing po uh, Pokemon Go or whatever that is, <laughs> looking at little characters. Uh, you know, get used to being in shape, and it also is healthy. Um, Mr. Uh, Davis, um, the trails, would that be your priority, or would there be other more pressing issues? There, there actually are other pressing issues, and the way the budget works out now is we have uh, we have set, set money set aside, and it's not a great deal of money, maybe a million or two million dollars a year that goes into the trail system. Now, every time we build a bridge, this is like a six, eight million dollar project, so we got to save up for two, three months, or two, three years just to build that. We do use money out of PECA, which is the county council's, you know, it's their option to do. I not, uh, you know, people love the trails. I don't ride the trails. I went on the trails one time. I was, I mean, I grew up here in Florida, folks. I walked through those swamps before there were trails. I lived on the other side of the river in Apopka, over by Wakaiva. So to me, it's just being home. You know, so I don't use the trails, but you know, there are people that love it and they want to ride on it, walk on it, jog on it. Hey, oh God, have a great time. Um, but it's going to take time, and we cannot, we cannot subsidize more money to this project to just finish these trails when we other have other more important things coming up in the very near future that we have to take care of. Mr. Lopatka, can, um, can I press that button? Sure, please. The, go ahead. The funds that are in there. In the echo fund can't go to play, pay the salaries for it. Yet. Right. No, they can't. That's okay. work work. So no, but that's no, not but what I'm saying when the program's money runs out and the trails aren't completed, that's what I meant to say. Okay. In other words, it's in a vacuum now. They bonded at the beginning for a lot of it and other projects as well that were for that program. But but they but may not be finished with it when when well, it runs so out. Let's be clear. There are money and grants there, and just because you have the design there doesn't mean you're going to get. <coughs> So we need to complete the design process of it, so and then participate as cities and county, as county and state level, so you can complete the trail. I'm not for taking money from a trail program 
uh, you can't. I mean, if you could take it to do this, you can't rob Peter to pay Paul. You, you have different funds that you have to take the money from. So I just want to make sure. <coughs> And, and, make, and you okay, know that. Okay. we got to move on to some yeah. other things. And, and, and I would just like to make one thing very, very clear. Echo is not bonded money. We bonded for forever Volusia, which we will be paying off in about five, six years. Right. But okay. what I was I trying to clarify. Right. The point was is that they may not have enough money when the money runs out to complete the trails, and I don't think they're going to. Is that a fair statement, Mr. Davis? It is. You know what? Um, unless there's a big boom somewhere. Uh, we're going to have to find another way to fund it. Okay, that's what I thought. Mr. Lepotka, yes. um, you're a veteran mayor of the City Commission, City Council, City Commission, and all city. Okay. Ed Kelly, you veteran, municipal level. Jason Davis, obviously, you went through the pain of, in the, your four years of seeing where you try to build consensus with the cities and the county on something as simple as 25 cent bus fares increases for Votran among the poorest, the working poor. Uh, a lot of single family, single family moms that have a waitressing job or whatever. And the cities were basically, that's your problem. Um, and, and I believe now, is that a fair statement? <coughs> well, actually, uh, yeah, well, the cities just looked at us in that meeting and said- Did they offer anything? Uh, they offered us a handshake as they walked out the door. And they all wanted a CRA, right? A new CRA? Yeah, everybody always wants a CRA. Okay. With that said, Mr. Lepotka, there's also another burning issue right now, which is, what do we do with the Daytona predominantly homeless? Do we have homeless in the land? Basically, every community has homeless. Some of them are missing, some aren't. Where do you go with the, 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 the homeless issue? Is it the county's responsibility? Is it the city's collectively? Um, not everybody wants to be on board with this thing. They, they say it's Daytona's problem. What do you well, say? Well, it's, it's not necessarily. The county and the cities, we share the responsibilities. Um, and, they, and they're diverse. Uh, we just had a uh, very interesting uh, stakeholders uh, meeting last week, and you may have been there. I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of people there. No, I wasn't because it was about my, the housing first my uh, model. Uh, but still, housing first requires some <laughs> form of a shelter uh, so they can triage people through there. I'm not talking about emergency shelter. I'm talking no, about no, but, but that, that it links it. Right. They're, they're still one and the same. Right. And so, you know, the variables are, are certainly there. They're being talked about. The HUD money, which would come for housing first, for example, but then there's an awful lot of rules and regulations associated with that. And it would not necessarily take care of, a, of, a, of a, uh, a statistical larger number of people that may not qualify for that. So it's not the answer, it is one of many answers. So what's happening now in Daytona Beach, I think they, uh, the uh, Salvation Army has, has run out. Yeah, I understand that, the hotels. They're going to try the hotels. Where it goes after that, I do not know. But my question to you is, if you become the county chair in January, would you be able, do you think you'll be able to build consensus with 14 cities and two towns? I do. You do? I, I absolutely do. Um, I'm, I'm the guy that found Robert Martin. I brought him into the county. Um, that's a consultant for the uh, and That's exactly right. And the he was facility the first guy I ever yeah. saw that was, was, was at, a, at a conference. He was talking about homes. Hadn't heard about it prior to that. So we engaged in a lengthy conversation afterwards. We invited him into the county. Ed was uh, was chairing the uh, Beacock at the time. We got him on the agenda. Right. We listened to him. We liked what he had to say because he was addressing the issue. Okay. And I don't mean to cut you off, but we've got to drop the coverage. You've got to jump in now. Mr. Kelly, again, J Jason Davis, uh, they were even joking on the dais about we could pass the hat to them or do some kind of no, trade off was, or something. Uh, it was actually Doug Daniels that said, uh, pass the hat around. Welcome to the Vote Tram fundraiser. Is what he said. Um, how, if you're elected county chair, Ed Kelly, do you think you could, like Mr. Puckett says, he thinks he can, can you build consensus among 14 cities and two towns? Absolutely. How? Without a doubt. How? The same way we built consensus on working through the issues with the round table and DCON, where we bring the issues up and we discuss. We arrive at that we can't vote in the round table. It's not an item where we vote. But we will be transparent with the cities. Unlike the county when they came to us on the boat train and tried to pull us under the bus. When we asked them, yes, they want us to pay for ridership. We asked them how many people rode our buses. They said, well, we don't know, but the guy in Dallas uh, gave an estimate based upon your economic indicators. How many people ride? And I said, I've got an app on my phone that can tell you exactly who's on the bus 48 right now and how many people are on that bus. So tell me how many people. 
same thing in the transportation plan. We asked him, where did the money go? No answer. We need to be transparent. We need to be upfront. We need to get all the information. And I will bring every city to the table to discuss. I won't be like when there was an offer was made by the mayor of Daytona to come and discuss the homeless issue. I would sit right down there right then. I would sit to the city county manager. I said, let's sit down as mayors and elected officials and let's discuss this issue. And I would suggest that the county manager sit with the city managers and do exactly the same thing. Come to a consensus. We've got mouths talking about it, we've got eyes looking at it, we've got ears hearing it, we've got people walking with no butt, no head, no money. And that's the difference. I can bring the leadership, the head, to bring it together. Mr. Davis, uh, your two counterparts here gave pretty strong presentations in terms of they believe they can get this done. Now, you were there on the dais, and I, if I recall correctly, you can tell me if I'm wrong, uh, Jim Denine, the county manager, said, look, we'll get four million up front, whatever, to no, buy a property, let me finish, and then you correct me them all. Uh, but then we're out of it. It's, we're not going to be stuck babysitting or having it dumped on us at the end because they can't get along with each other. Is that a correct statement? Uh, it's very simply. Uh, actually, Josh Wagner brought $4 million to 10 acres. And here's the thing. You know, we but brought, didn't Mr. Deneen say, he said, yes, we can, up, do it. we can do it. Out. And we can do that. We can Did do he it. say, we'll put the money up and then we're out? Yes or no? Can I finish? Please, thanks for the question. He said, we put the $10 million up, we will give you the land, we'll help you with the infrastructure, and you own it. $10 million before? Or, I'm sorry, $4 million. Four million sorry. But did he say then we're out of it? Yes, he said, you okay. own it. All we right, don't you. own it. Thank you. Um, is that a good, up. is that, no, no, no. Well, okay, I'll ask you. And there's still not a consensus on the homeless. So well, I was going to save you from being put on the spot. But no, no, please. Can, if you went to your second term, if you were successful, can you build consensus in 14 cities and two towns to get this done, like you guys did the whole place? Well, see, here's the thing about building consensus. Yeah, I'm trying to build consensus. That's why the county manager and I created the elected table, the elected round table. We brought in all 16 cities together. You're supposed to talk about the issue there. That's why we're there. Talk about it. You, you guys did what? We created the elected officials round table, put it in the airport, buy them lunch, we put them around the table and said, here's the issues we need to discuss. Oh, is that the way that the county was mad at Yeah, yeah right. So we discussed this issue. issue. Chewing? We're supposed to discuss the issue and bring it back to the councils, all the councils, and tell them what was discussed. Let's go do some work together. No. The council of elected officials put the homeless in a subcommittee and another committee, and then here come the three wise guys. Who's getting anything? The way to kill government? You put it in committee. You underfund it or put it in committee, nothing ever gets done. Welcome. We put 10 acres, 4 million bucks on the table. Who here wants 10 acres okay. and 4 million bucks? The question, and then you have 10 seconds to answer it. If you are reelected, and I'm giving you until January, can you build, can you get this thing done where the homeless thing is addressed countywide with all 14, 14 cities, two towns, and the county government? There is probably no way anyone will do that because you have to have the four so the cities no. and the two towns willing to admit they have a problem, willing to come to the table, and willing to actually do okay, something so the, the county no. has been willing to do, which is open up our wallet and say, let's get the problem fixed. Mr. Davis, the answer is no. Is that correct? I said it's not probable. Okay. Nobody will be able to do it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kelly, you want to jump in? Yeah, I, I can do it. And it's a matter of bringing people together. It's not drawing a line in the sand and said, here's what we're going to do, and that's it. And you've drawn the line in, and you said, this is as far as we're going to go. It's not really a matter of money. It's $2 per resident to fund it if you had to fund every bit of it. I can find that million dollars and probably 10 times that much in the budget by going through the budget with a fine tooth comb. Right. If you got stuck with it. If and you're doing a zero base budget. Wouldn't, you wouldn't get stuck with it. Right, because, if you're doing a zero base budget. Yeah, you wouldn't do zero base. And you wouldn't have to do that because you're going to have the faith-based community. You're going to have the social services people together. You're going to have the cities and the private sector all chipping in to fund everything because you're going to have a leader. And you're going to have someone who really wants to make a difference and get it done as opposed to someone who says, we're going to get 10 acres, $4 million, and that's it. We're not going to do it. It won't get done that way. Okay. Tom Lepatka. Yes. Uh, Greg Gibbert has uh, extolled uh, his 
Mr. Lopaka, please, gentlemen, please. We're running out of time. Mr. Lopaka, Mr. Gimber has made it very clear on Facebook that it really, the time has come for significant change on the dais to have a whole new slate of candidates that are like his way of thinking where there's accountability from his point of view. Um, he says that the beach and, uh, and everything else wouldn't be as big of an impact on people if the insiders weren't controlling what the county council members do. Do you buy that? Um, do you think there's some truth to that? Or do you think it's up to each individual candidate who's elected to carry their own way? Does that make well, sense? Well, it's, it's kind of making sense, but I think that, that what's, what is, if I was to point out anything that might be lacking on the county council is their ability to, to develop policy. But that's their job. Is it not? I didn't say that's their job. I said that's No, that is their job, that right? Possibly, I, I'm not seeing that. Right, okay. So, so when Mr. Deneen put forth his, his, was that a policy statement from the, from the council itself, or was that just coming from the manager as to what he thinks that he could do or should do? I've always questioned that. I don't know if that's a policy statement. Right. I've only got to assume that it might be. Okay. Don't know that. But if I was, if I was the chair, we would certainly, before we uttered anything like that, the responsibility would be, is it policy or is it not? And if it wasn't policy, it would be irresponsible. Mr. Kelly, uh, following up with Mr. Lepunka's answer, I think it's pretty strong. Um, is Greg Gimbert right that you kind of government's out of touch and that they're just answering to the, 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 the big big shot, the big wigs that have all the money and that he needs to clean slate and get rid of them and start over? I think that's the issue. I think the issue just clearly goes back to the lack of leadership. And there will be three new people on the county council after this election. And you'll have three people who could get made the decision to set the policy and have the county manager work at the direction and pleasure of the elected Thank you. Jason Davis, you're the incumbent. Mm -hmm. I think Mr. Kelly was saying there's a lack of leadership. What's your title there now? Yeah, you're the county chair, chair right? So you're going to take that from him? What's your response? You He's saying there's a lack of leadership. Oh, gee, that's great. Wonderful. And, There's uh, only one county chair. Yeah, we're only one county chair. That's right. And also one vote on the bias. And as far as leadership goes, I've been leading this council for four years into our situations and trying to fix these problems. You know, when everybody says, oh, we need leadership consensus, well, it's like this. It's, you got to have assistance from the other cities, all these cities. Well, I can bring them all together. Well. I brought you together. We sat and tried to discuss this thing long before the, the millions of dollars and the acreage came out, and it went nowhere. We talked to you about low tram buses. We said, hey, we want to do this. We need your help. We're a million short. What can we, what, how can we work this together? Everybody walked out the room. They come to us, and the only thing they ever wanted was give me a CRA, give me more tax money, where's my tax the donation for the fuel tax, and oh, I'm supporting the one penny gas tax. That's that's just coming to us and saying, we need money. Give us money. We don't want to help, okay. but give us money. Thank you. Tom Lepatka. Uh, Tom Lepatka, um, you've heard from the other two gentlemen. You're running to be the next leader in the face of the Lucia County government. Do you believe the incumbent is leading this county in that role? Well, I, You're I, running I, against him. I, 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 what I'm saying is, and what I've said before there, I don't believe that there's a lot of policy that's being being uh, brought down from the uh, from the policy makers, uh, and, and as a result of that, I think that, that what's what's going on is a lot of uh, discontented things that take place. And if you bring up the Votran, I believe that that was posted, given to us on, in a meeting on a Monday, possibly at the airport. And I think by Thursday, the announcement was made that we're not cooperating as a city. So you're you're starting to breathe this we they thing. And, and that's the danger zone when you start getting that, uh, because that, now it's uh, um, you start to head off into the mistrust. You know, I sit on the Florida League of Mayors Board of Directors. I'm with mayors from all over the all over the state, and I I find out what they're doing. There are counties that get along exceptionally well with their cities, and some that don't. Okay, um, we're going to have one last question and then we close this because uh, we're out of time. Um, I'll stop with you, Mr. Yeah. Uh, and it goes back to the gentleman. And I call him a gentleman who isn't here. Um, Mr. Gimmer. Um, Mr. Lopatka, Mr. Davis Pierce. Mr. Lopatka, Mr. Gimmer has 
left a lot of the equation in terms of blame for where the beach has gone wrong in terms of, if he's not elected, the beach is going to be gone. The, the access to the beach is going to be gone. All the cars are going to be gone off the beach. Um, but Mr. Gimbert, just early this week, uh, sought the endorsement of Leslie Blackner, who is the um, attorney for the so-called sea turtle suit. Uh, the the, the um, federal lawsuit uh, 20 something years ago, I don't know, I know it's going to be, a long time ago, that drastically changed, it not only restricted the beach driving, but put in all kinds of uh, clauses with egresses and, you know, based on sea turtle mass, pollution, traffic, and I think to some degree, even though some will admit it, that the, the lady Shirley Reynolds and I can't the other lady, Reed Alexander. Reed Alexander, that they basically were beach dwellers who wanted their own private beach. Uh, and I believe somebody told me that one of them still is here or may have been here and didn't have the private beach after all. With that said, um, Mr. Um, Gibbert, I'm trying to wrap this up, basically has sought and she's written a letter to him that the news journal has yet to publish. My understanding, unless they publish it, I missed it. Um, where she's praising Mr. Gibbert. Uh, the sons of the beach leader, uh, Paul Zimmerman, described Leslie Bisner as a quote unquote snake, and I'll spell it for you S N A K E, snake, not fake or flake, snake. Um, and he basically said that let the nation vote, Mr. Gibbert's campaign was a, was, a, was a bust, didn't work. What do you think about that thing where Gibbert is saying that Mr. Um, Davis, the incumbent, and Mr. Kelly, who wants to be the next chair, will sell out and continue to give the insiders what they want and not give, let the people keep their beach unless he's elected. You agree with that? Well, I, I'm, a, I'm a beach driving advocate. I've stated that. Uh, I've seen your picture on Facebook so from what, 25 years ago. Uh, I believe in that, and uh, that's how I've always, uh, for 35 years, have used Daytona Beach. It's culturally uh, acceptable. Uh, the fact that the culture almost dictates that. It's also an economic driver in itself, and, and I don't, for the life of me, understand why that's in question. Uh, Mr. Mr. Kelly, very, very briefly, um, you know the background. Basically, Gibbert is saying, you, you're not going to do anything to save the beach. Mr. Davis certainly isn't going to do anything to save the beach. We have to have Mr. Gibbert, or the beach is going to be gone. But, but and then he praises and takes a donation from this attorney and says, taking 15 miles, that's 15 miles of the beach off, who's taking cars off the beach? He said that was a good thing. So I'm not trying to take the, the cars off the beach for the turtles. I mean, the, we had to, they had to do that, but I'm not praising that as being good. I didn't like it when they took them off for the turtles. They won't listen to other options of relocating turtles. And, but okay. anyway, to take the praises of this attorney and take her money, Miss Blackburn. Miss Black. Miss Black. What's it? Blackburn. Blackburn. Black. 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 To take her money. Who's the leader of a failed uh, constitutional amendment in 2010? I think uh, for for hometown democracy, which changes our whole form of government. I mean, that's what you want to do. It's just like he wants to run the county like a neighborhood. I mean, whose neighborhood? Mine. His. Yours. Yours. Well, Jason Davis. So, so that I mean, that's that's what is. Is yeah, going to the whole thing. Right. I don't know how to quit. And, and Jason Davis, you know, in the annals of Volusia County's modern times, I think of the execution of Aileen Buenos. I think of John Tanner getting booted out of office because he wanted to see everybody's uh, receipts for uh, whether they were renting adult films from bookstore, uh, video stores. Um, how does this compare with the beach, with, the, with these two ladies and that attorney drastically reducing the, the beach driving and now? The guy who led the way to, to try to change that now aligning himself with her. And he's calling you a hypocrite yeah. and that you need to be booted out of office. That's right. And uh, at least I didn't go to the Suns and Beaches and say, hey, I need your help. Give me, give me your lawyer. Let's fight this game. You know, let's go sue the county, sue the county. They sued us four times and lost all four times because it's unconstitutional, number one. Number two, if, believe me, folks, if Volusia County government or the council said, I don't want cars out on the beach, this Thursday would be taken care of. There would be no cars on the beach. Because this council and I say, leave the damn beach alone, the cars are staying where they are. Believe me, you have till May 7th, March 7th of next year for the Weston Inn to be completed. 
or the cars do not come off the beach. And how long would distance talk between us two in terms of mileage? It's like a, about a mile. But you also have until December 31st of 2018 for the hard rock to be complete or nothing happens. And I, when I say complete, entire listing of the ordinance must be followed to the letter or nothing happens. And believe me, I drove okay. by everything. I really don't and, see and, it and to be clear with all three gentlemen on the, uh, on the front table here, um, the whole principle of Gimbert's <coughs> rallying cry was let Volusia vote, that have the citizens take it to a, a, a uh, what, what uh, uh, vote, vote a referendum. Hold on, a vote well, referendum. Let me finish. A vote a referendum, um, but the courts are very clear based on state statutes. We have a representative form of government, and that's why we elect people to the council. Would all three of you agree with that? Yeah. 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 So I don't know how many lawsuits can be filed and appeals. I don't know how many they <laughs> Five so far. Um, we took them in for just judicial review. I never sued anybody. I never sued anybody. We took them in for judicial review. It failed, and then the four lawsuits from Mr. Gay. Your, your question was to believe in that in that form of government. Right. Now that form of government all has also has the option to send things out that they don't want to make decisions on. Right. They can send them out for referendum. I want to clarify. Yeah, they could. If they wanted to, they could they could make that, but they didn't do sales time. Okay. But then you have proliferation of lawsuits. If people don't like the way it's going, and certain things and witnesses. Well, then the other thing has to go back to the incident. Don't take for a minute. The county had the control of that. The county loses their ability by putting it out to the vote. There's a legal question of whether or not that would then take away the legal uh, right to have for the incident. Don't take for a minute on the vote. I, I do want to bring up one thing that I forgot to ask you. A 30 second response from you guys, or if you don't want to respond at all, it's fine. But if Mr. Gibbert were here, I would ask him this directly. Uh, Greg Gimber, you gave $58,000 from a line of credit, a second mortgage on your own, to a guy that was in a racing circuit who said he could give you a big increase on your investment, big return on your re investment. It turned into a multi-million dollar Ponzi scheme. Um, what does that say about one's use of personal finances and judgment to be the face, the lead person the highest elected office in Volusia County. Mr. Bucket? No, I don't have a comment. I don't, I don't know the truth or, or, or not about the, 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 you know, it's just hearsay as far as I know. There's over 100 stories published on Google. Uh, national newspapers, the Orlando Sentinel, oh, the Florida Sun Sentinel. Right, okay, I understand. Mr. Kelly, uh, your, your take on it. He judgment, judgment in terms of your taking that directly. Well, your own family. People have judgment. that put, if they're putting their families in risk for a Scheme, get rich scheme. A get rich scheme, then that their judgment needs anyone's judgment needs to be looked at. If you can afford to lose fifty-eight thousand uh, dollars, and it's okay to do that with your money, that's fine. With the county's money or the city's money, the government's money that I'm responsible for, I'm not going to risk that. Jason Davis, quickly. Yeah, that was a little bit of a risk. It's like this. Uh, not you're not taking. I'm not going to risk my family's well-being in a place for them to live, where then I have to go to a homeless shelter, which we talked about earlier, that doesn't exist. And not be able to afford And not be able to afford a boat bus. And can't buy a boat train bus, so it's all rolled All right, gentlemen. Yeah. I wanted to get that out, not to be take a cheap shot, but I implored Mr. Gambert to third parties to please be welcome to today. Uh, he, he only did that, cut me off, because I want to ask him questions of reports like I'm asking you. And it should be noted that he attended our public candidate debates in 2014, uh, every one of them. Um, now, with that said, closing arguments, I'm going to end with the county chair because he is the incumbent. Uh, Mr. Kelly, would you go first, please, your closing arguments? One two minute. minutes. I get two. And that's it. Two, two minutes. minutes. I can do it in one minute. All right, one minute. I think what you've seen today and what's been reported and what will be shown shows that there's a distinct difference between the three or four of us. Uh, one shows up, one doesn't show up, three of us show up to let people know where we stand on the issues. And hopefully they will be able to see this time and the people that are watching that are going to repost this on Facebook will see exactly what came out of our mouths and quit telling those fibs and putting things out there. Put the truth out there. So then let's decide this election based upon one's ability to provide the leadership necessary to address all the issues that we have. And we have a lot of issues to address. We have a lot of issues to bring consensus to. Most importantly, I said this, and you'll start hearing more, 
is public safety. We need to ensure, I said this months ago, that our police, our sheriff's department, all our police departments are funded, they're well trained, we have the funding to be able to... Are you done? You said one, you, you got two I'll go to, I'll take another 30 seconds. <laughs> you got it? So, you know, so, so that we can have, make sure that EVAC is trained, make sure every personnel is trained. The Ormond Beach depends upon the, uh, the uh, SWAT team, we depend upon the services from the county. We want the operators that answer the 911 call. We want them trained. We want to keep them. We want to make sure they're trained and funded. Period. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lopatka. Your closing argument. You have up to two minutes. Okay. The, the, the infrastructure we're talking about tonight is, is is all relevant to everything that takes place. But also, I think that uh, we have a county, and I mentioned this earlier in my opening remarks. I like to keep the painted side up. This county has got all of the elements to be one of the best counties, best working counties, and not only in the state, but in the country. Right here, probably less than 100 yards from this building, is, is a college, a very well-recognized college in chiropractic uh, uh, practice. Uh, we have three stellar universities within the walls. We have, what, 47 miles of some of the best beachfront in Florida. 49. On the other side, there's 43, 44 miles of one of the best uh, rivers in, in the uh, in the state of Florida, <coughs> uh, north of the Flow River, by the way. Um, there are a lot of smart people around here. We're training our kids. We have we have infrastructure that is uh, superb. Uh, so yeah, we're we're getting into the into the big game, and we should be. Central Florida is, is moving, moving very well, and it's also not just a tourist trade. Uh, technology is is really starting to drive uh, the business. Uh, flavor and the uh, uh, money in Central Park, and we are on that map, we're part of it. So as far as uh, my, uh, my, my goal is, that we should be at those tables, and we will be at those tables, and I will, uh, will implore you both for Tom Lopatka, August 30th, for the Lucia County Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Lopatka. Uh, Mr. Davis, your closing line, up to two minutes. But well, yes, there are some stark differences you've seen uh, uh, this evening. You know, uh, Mr. Gibber, the no show, uh, two mayors, and I do not agree on certain items. And uh, but let's just talk about what the leadership accomplishments have been over the past four years. Four years ago, when I started as county chair, one of my battle cries was, "We're going to be a tax reducing county." It took us three years. This is how government works. It doesn't work overnight. It takes and it takes negotiation, and it takes discussion, and it takes hard work, and it takes 60 hours a week to get these things done. And I was doing it, and I have been in the trenches. I have been doing this, the job. So now we go from 6.3 to 6.1 millage on the on Volusia County General Fund. It's not a lot. It's only about $76 million. Gee, it's not a big number, huh? But in two years, we have made the commitment, and this is the consensus that this council has gone to, to be debt-free in two years, go to zero. Then what do we do after that? We can bring that millage rate actually down far. We can continue to bring the millage rate down. This is what we promised. This is what everybody wanted to do. We're up here doing it. We're fighting it. You know, and we've tried to bring the consensus, and like I said, it's two to dance. You gotta have two to tango. We've gone to the cities, we've gone, brought, we created the organization to make it happen, and nothing happened. We went to the nonprofits. I'm still in negotiations right now, in discussions with Christian, with Catholic Charities to try to get this homeless issue done. This is not a, just a build a building and go. This is a very complex issue about health care, about law enforcement about feeding, about clothing, and education, and curing a problem, because homelessness is an issue, and it is a disease. All I got to say is, we want to keep the good work going. Jason Davis from County Church is the only choice. Okay, I, I want to skip a closing statement, and then say good night to everybody. We give you 30 seconds. Thank you. Um, <laughs> shut the timer off. Um, I'm giving you 30 seconds. Um, I want to say thank you to, uh, uh, Chase Tremont, Sarah Jones, Don Burnett, Ted Noftel, Lance Green, Tom Laputka, Ed Kelly, and Jason Davis. Um, because I believe that this kind of forum, a media style debate, uh, you know, we had 50, about 50 people at the beginning after a hard rain, 
and we're down to uh, maybe 15 or 20. Um, but everybody came, and those who did come here, you, I can't say thank you enough. And fortunately, we'll have the video presentation um, to, to show the masses. Um, I know that sometimes tonight I made a few mistakes here and there, but you know, with the surgery and everything, my doctor's gonna be mad to find out that I'm out here doing this to begin with. But I wanna say thank you to everybody. God bless you. And this is the most important thing we can do for the public. So for the eight of the nine people, eight of the nine candidates who did come to the debates, I say you have my heartfelt thank you. Good night. Thanks, Henry.